Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for joining me. This is the first of a four-part series on thermostats, all about how does a thermostat work. This series is good for those of you who might first be getting involved in HVAC, relative beginners, as well as uh, interested lay people. So come on with me on this journey and learn all about how thermostats work. As I mentioned, this is a four-part series. This is part one, and we're gonna learn what is a thermostat, what does it do, and how does it do it. Part two is going to be all about modern electronic thermostats, how they work, what they do, and how they do it. Part three, we're gonna show you how to bench test a thermostat, just like this one. We're gonna put it on the bench, use a meter, and identify how to tell, is it working correctly, and doing what it's supposed to do. Part four is a little more advanced. It's all about advanced setup called what is cycle rate and what should I, <laughs> why should I care? All right, folks, thanks for coming and let's get into thermostats. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, what in the heck is a thermostat? Well, let's look at the word thermostat. It's two words put together. Thermo meaning having to do with temperature or having to do with heat. And stat is related to static, thermostatic. Static meaning keeping the same or not changing. So when we put those two terms together, we can interpret thermostat to mean a device that keeps the temperature constant or keeps it from changing or keeps it the same. And that is exactly what a thermostat does. Our thermostats that hang on the wall that operate our heating and cooling equipment are designed to maintain the temperature in our space and keep them at a set point. Most of the thermostats that we're going to work with that are on the wall in the room have an adjustable set point. So wherever you set that set point, say 72 degrees Fahrenheit, that thermostat will maintain the temperature in, the, in that location at that set point. So thermostatic. Well, that's great, not super helpful. What exactly is a thermostat? And to do that, we're gonna get a little deeper into electrical switches. Now, if you're not real super familiar or an expert on how exactly a switch works, go to our channel and look at how a switch works. We'll tell you all about that because as we're gonna find out, a thermostat is actually a switch. And by the way, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the, hit the like button, and also hit the notification bell so that you will get updates uh, every time we drop a new video like this one. Okay, let's go ahead and get into how a thermostat functions. So a thermostat is a temperature activated switch. And on this diagram here, let me get my mouse pointer going, there we go. You'll notice that we have a switch here that has three terminals on it. One is labeled R, one ultimately is labeled W, I'm sorry, Y, if you follow it down, and the other is labeled W, if you follow it down. So R, Y, and W. And in the middle is a switch that will switch in between W and Y, connecting each one to R in turn. The symbol that you see here, this kind of little square notched device, is the schematic symbol for temperature activated. There are multiple types of switches that are categorized by how they are activated, such as temperature activated, pressure activated, flow activated, level activated. These are four of the most common types of automatic switches that you'll find in the HVAC industry, and thermostats are temperature activated which makes sense, right? So the symbol here shows what will happen when the controlled medium rises or falls in value. So if temperature rises, it pushes upwards on the switch. If temperature falls, it pulls downward on the switch. So that's the basic idea behind a thermostat. There's going to be a temperature sensitive element and that element is going to physically cause a switch to move based on changes in temperature relative to what the set point is. So let's take a look at how this actually functions. Let's take a look at the thermostat first in cooling mode. Now over here in the lower right hand corner, we have a mode switch. 
and most residential heating and cooling thermostats have a mode switch that allow you to select between off, between cooling mode, and heating mode. Some more advanced thermostats may also have an automatic function here, which is referred to auto changeover. So it will automatically decide what mode to be in. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to look at this thermostat, which is either heat mode, off mode, or cool mode. So let's go ahead and put the thermostat into cool mode. And let's apply a rising temperature to the room. As the temperature rises, the temperature literally causes the movable temperature sensitive element to move and pushes it upwards as temperatures in the room rise. This causes a circuit to complete between the R terminal and the Y terminal and power flows from R through to Y and then on to energize the cooling equipment. Before we go too far we should identify that the voltage that thermostats carry is typically 24 volts AC. There are line voltage thermostats which carry 120 volts AC and even up to 240 volts AC. Uh, and those would be used to control like a baseboard heater or something along those lines. Essentially, they work the same way. They just utilize a different voltage. But our residential heating and cooling thermostats that are operating a gas furnace or a gas boiler or an air conditioner or a heat pump. These are all 24 volt thermostats and that's what we're talking about here. So now that we know that we have a demand for cooling because room temperature rose, pushing the thermostatic element in one direction, moving the switch to, com to uh, complete the circuit between the R terminal and the Y terminal, and then that 24 volts goes on to energize the cooling system. As we continue on, let's check it in heating mode. We've moved our mode selector from cool over to heat, and we're going to say that the room temperature is now falling. So let's apply lowering or falling room temperatures to the thermostat, and it will respond by moving in the opposite direction and completing the circuit between the R terminal and the W terminal sending 24 volts out the W terminal to go on to energize the heating system. Now as uh, the heat is on, room temperature is going to start rising back upward again. And as room temperature rises now, that is going to push that thermostat back in the opposite direction, moving it to the other direction. Now because of our mode switch, even though we are complete or closed between R and Y, we can't actually energize the cooling equipment because our mode switch is only complete on the heating side. It is not complete on the cooling side. So this is free to close here, but it's not going to do anything because of our mode switch. And as I mentioned before, there are some thermostats that also have an automatic changeover mode, which in this case, there will be a dead band where in between the call for heat and the call for cooling, there will be a midpoint where nothing will happen and that, that switch arm will actually literally float in the middle there, not doing anything. And typically the dead band between heating and cooling is about two degrees. Cooling set point is almost always at least two degrees higher than the heating set point for two reasons. One, you don't want the thing banging from heat to cool to heat to cool to heat to cool to heat to cool. And two, you don't want, um, you don't want the system to get confused as to be what mode is it supposed to be in. So that's why we have a dead band. So in a nutshell, that is how a thermostat works. A thermostat is a temperature activated switch. It responds to changes in room temperature and physically moves a switch one direction or another to complete a circuit. Let's take a quick look at one of those devices found in the wild and watch it move from one side to the other. So here we see an old fashioned thermostat and down at the bottom, the little coil that you see is the temperature sensitive element. And as I move the temperature selector from warmer to cooler, you'll see that center arm, that little flag, move from one side to the other. That center arm 
would be R in our previous diagram. The left-hand terminal would be Y in our previous diagram. And the right-hand terminal would be W in the previous diagram. So there you go. That is how a thermostat works uh, from a basic level. And stay tuned to our next video, which is how does an electronic programmable thermostat work? I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about other training programs that we offer, go to www.hvacservicementor.com and check it out. While you're there, don't forget to sign up on our email list. Every new sign up gets access to a free full length training session. Until next time, see you later.